Hey guys, welcome back. This is Delicube Tutorial here with another cool tutorial. And today we're going to be doing some Photoshop stuff, not Cinema 4D. I thought let's uh, have a little bit of change. And I'm going to be having a few uh, low poly tutorials coming up soon because one of my subscribers commented below. So um, you're going to have a tutorial coming up, buddy. Anyways, uh, in today's tutorial, we're going to be learning to create something cool, something new uh, in Cinema 4D. Sorry, in uh, Photoshop. My bad. So let me just show you what we're going to be creating. So this is what we're going to be creating. It's I called it the Stormy Cup. So uh, you can see here that uh, we have this cool text. And we have some clouds and some birds and uh, this coffee cup or whatever with some cool lighting and this nice background and some shadow down at the bottom and uh, this these waves of sea or whatever you call that cool stuff so uh, let's learn to create this thing from scratch okay so the first thing you'll need is a few pictures uh, so you'll need two clouds um, so let me just show you the pictures as and when we go on with the tutorial rather than me talking about it. So let's import our first uh, picture. So we go to File and then we go to Open. So uh, I found this photo online, Iced Coffee. So it looks uh, somewhat uh, like that. And uh, so what we want to do is I'm going to make this a complete basic tutorial for those who don't even know Photoshop or just beginning Photoshop. So uh, what you want to do is we want to press Control 0 on the keyboard to fit it to the screen over here exactly. And then what we want to do is we want to take this tool called the pen tool and we want to hold Alt and then we want to, we want to move our mouse to zoom in and then we want to start isolating this thing. So we just go click here and then we want to move down and then we want to click here and then we're going to click here and then we're going to make sure that we get a nice curve on the bottom okay then we want to click here and then we want to click here we'll just uh, worry about this random curve a little later then, uh, we just have to click and drag and uh, click and drag click and then click and then you just want to go over this thing pretty fast so we just click 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 keep clicking it okay let's go up So as like in Photoshop, uh, if, if you need to undo, if you press Ctrl Z, it un does an undo once. But if you want it to undo again, you need to hold Ctrl Alt and then we can get that done. Now, uh, we need to go down and uh, to this point over here. So let's... Uh, okay, let's do that later. So what we want to do is we're going to press Ctrl 0 to get back again to the fit the screen. Now there are two things you want to do. You want to either go right click, uh, you know, pen tool, you want to right click and uh, choose make selection and hit OK, which gets the selection done. Or you can just press Ctrl Enter to get the selection done. And then once we do that, we want to do Ctrl C. We want to copy that. And then we want to go into a new project, go to File, New, and uh, we're going to go to Inches over here and uh, click OK. And then we want to press Ctrl V to paste it, which kind of paste, paste it uh, exactly here. 
but this is not the uh, dimension that I want for my tutorial, for my scene. So to change that, we want to go into image and we want to go to canvas size. And here in the inches, I'm going to set this to 10 by 15 and control O and we get something like this. And this is pretty small. So we want to press control T and we want to scale this up big time and hit enter. And then uh, we want to come down here and we just want to uh, start this thing out. So we take the pen tool, click here, click here, click here, click here and uh, click here we want to press ctrl enter and then we want to hit delete and uh, we want to press ctrl d to deselect anything that we have and it looks like this edge is not that perfect so i'm going to click here and i'm going to click here and, uh, and uh, okay and then i'm going to click down Click down here and here and press Control enter and we're going to delete. Now that looks uh, pretty uh, smooth. What we, one thing we can do is we can go take our eraser tool by pressing E on the keyboard and we need to make sure that our hardness is 100%. We can press the square bracket to reduce down the size and then we can just, oops, we want to make sure that this is a hundred percent and we want to make sure the opacity here is over a hundred percent as well and we just want to click here right on the edges to create a smooth curve so just just like that it doesn't have to be that perfect because it's, it's not going to be seen anyway and uh, looks like here also we have some things to be cut out so we press p on the keyboard to get the pen tool again we click here we click here and then let's click here and remove this and you want to click here you, wanna, you can press the arrow keys to move the anchor point and we want to click here and press ctrl enter and delete and press ctrl d to deselect now let's go to the top and see anyway we're going to be removing this whole thing out so that's not going to be a problem so now once that is done i'm going to double click on the background over here which removes the lock position lock over here and i'm just going to click ok and I'm going to go here to the color modes and I'm going to choose a color. Uh, so I'm going to choose 0, 15, and 15. So that is 0, 0, 0, F, O, F, or F, 0, F. And then we want to click on this paint bucket tool. The shortcut is G and we're just going to click. And that creates a nice background for it. Okay. Okay. So once that's done, we want to go zoom in a little bit over here by pressing Alt and your mouse key, or you can just roll in with your mouse button, whatever suits you. And uh, we want to get the pen tool again, and then we want to cut off this area. So I'm just going to go here and uh, draw this over here. And uh, we want to click and hold down Shift, and then we want to drag it, which creates an even tangent. And then we're going to click here again. And then we're going to click here again. Control Z that, Control Alt Z. And then we just want to go select the whole thing and press Control Enter. Or we can go right click and choose Make Selection. And we're going to hit Delete. Oops. Uh, we want to make sure that we have selected this cup layer. So let me just rename this to Cup and hit Delete and press Ctrl D to Zag. So now that get res gets rid of the whole thing. Now we want to go to File and we want to choose Place. And we want to choose Place. I have this uh, picture of a seashore and I'm just going to hit Enter to place it. And now we're going to we're going to go right click and we're going to, go to, going to choose Rasterize. So what Rasterize does is it makes it completely editable like in Cinema 4D. We press C on the keyboard to make the object editable. The same way here, we're going to make this editable. And now what we're going to do is we're going to go and uh, start I'm going to get this part of the shore. If you guys want the project files, please leave a cop uh, of the, the reference images. Please leave a comment down below and I shall be giving it to you then. Giving it to you. Okay. So let's just go and uh, grab this whole thing. Let's press Ctrl Enter to select. We want to press Ctrl C 
and we're gonna press Control V. So what that does is, if we hide this layer, we get this uh, C layer. So now what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna press Control T, and I'm gonna go rotate it like that. Press Enter, and I'm going to place it like that. Uh, oops. Press Control T again. Just you know, get the make sure we get the right angle. Okay. Cool, something like that. Make sure it covers the whole thing. So let me just move it with my arrow keys. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to actually cut off the unnecessary part. So as is like, since I can't see the cup, I'm just going to go to the opacity and I'm going to set that to 50%. And then I'm going to check, take my pen tool again, and then I'm just going to go and start uh, creating the shape for this thing. So like that. I'm going to come here, we're going to hold down shift, and then we're going to come, come here and here, and then we just want to go and uh, uh, approximately find, like, make an approximate as to where the other side of the cup would be. We're going to hold down shift, no, let's not do that, let's just go here, and then we can say, come on, go and uh, make it look something like that, and... Then we're gonna press Control Enter, and then we're gonna go, and then we want to go to Image, and uh, sorry, Layer and Invert Layer. So Image, um, Edit, uh, Layer, Delete Layer Mask, Unhide. Okay, we just want to press Control Shift I to invert it. Sorry, Control I to Control Shift I. To in order, and then we want to hit delete. Control I, Control Shift I, and then we want to hit delete. Okay, so Control Shift I is the invert, and then we want to press Control and we want to press Control D to deselect. And now what we want to do is we just want to go and uh, scale this up a little bit so that it covers most of the cup. Okay. And I'm just going to go take my eraser tool and uh, just erase off these edges so we get a smooth edge. Okay. And I'm going to press Ctrl G and this I'm going to increase this size a little bit and a little bit over here as well. And then I'm going to set this opacity back to 800 to 100. Okay. That looks that looks pretty crazy. Oops, just, just get a slight roundness over there. Okay, so once that is done, we want to go uh, and create a new layer by pressing Ctrl Shift N. And then we just want to call this Fade. And we're going to click this, we're going to check this checkbox, Use Previous Layer to Create a Clipping Mask. And click OK. So what you can see here, we have this nice small arrow that is over here. And what it actually does is when I just uh, we need to go press, I'm going to press B to get my brush tool, and then when I just brush over, you can see that it is brushing over only on the inside of this, and not on the outside, even though my brush is outside. That is because it is clipped to this layer. So whatever is the distance of this layer, it is restricted to that itself when there is a clipping mask. So let me control Z that. And now what I'm going to do is, with this color, that is the same color, you just want to go and uh, we would just want to slowly increase our brush size and just slightly start giving this nice touch to it make it dark like kind of blending it, blending it, blending it and as if it's fading away okay don't do it too much or else it'll spoil it. Okay. Okay. Uh, the next thing what you want to do is we want to go and uh, duplicate this layer by pressing Control J, and we want to hold. And to create a clipping mask, we need to hold Alt, and uh, you need to come in between these two lines, and you can see this kind of a box with an arrow mark, and you just want to click. So that creates a clipping mask as well. And uh, actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, Control Z that, and I'm going to delete this. I'm going to Check this back on. I'm gonna hide this, and uh, I'm gonna go quickly and create 
another uh, mask out of this. So just quickly run through, just get all the edge waves and all that stuff. The edges. Okay. Press Control Enter. And we're gonna hide this and we're gonna paste it by pressing Control V. And we're gonna put this on top of the fade. And we're gonna check this layer on. And then we're gonna create this as a clipping mask as well. And now we choose our move selection and we move it over here. I'm gonna press Control T. I'm gonna move it like that. And then I'm just gonna go and place it somewhere like that so we get another set of waves. And I'm gonna press Control J to duplicate that again. Make that as a clipping mask as well, and move it over a little bit over here to give it some randomness. Okay, let's uh, move a little bit this side, and we can take this one and uh, move it over here. Probably that looks good. So we have these uh, set of nice waves. You can randomize them. Select this one and this. Okay. And now what we want to do is we want to do the same process. We're going to press take press B on the keyboard and we're going to start brushing this edge up real nice. Give it some nice edges, like kind of you're blurring it out or something like that. Make it look pretty cool. And we're going to go on this layer and do the same as well. Uh, okay, let's go here a little bit more deep down and let's just let's not do it too much. Let's a little slightly. Okay, and then we're going to press Control S. Okay, you don't have to save it, but that's okay. Okay, so once we're done with that, we're going to get, do some color correction. So we want to go and create a new adjustment, uh, new adjustment layer. So we click this button over here, which gives us a list of options. And uh, we want to choose human saturation. And I'm going to click on Colorize, and I'm going to set the saturation up to 60. Now, uh, the thing is, it's affecting the whole cup, which is not what we want. So we could, we're going to create a clipping mask. So we're going to click Alt, and we're going to click, which, which only creates a clipping mask for this thing. And then we want to go and choose another adjustment layer. We're going to choose Brightness and Contrast. And the Brightness, I'm going to set that to minus 55. And the Contrast, I'm going to set that to 35. Okay, and uh, again, we're going to go click Alt and create a clipping mask, which clips this cool thing up okay so the next thing we want to do is we're going to press ctrl o to zoom it back out again and then now we're going to be creating some cool flares so how are we going to be doing that so we are going to go and uh, choose this tool which is the ellipse tool and we want to click and we want to drag and we're going to hit click on alt and shift uh, sorry not shift only alt and uh, till we get uh, something like this and here in the fill, I'm going to set that to none. And on the stroke, I'm going to give it a white stroke. And then we want to go right click and we want to choose rasterize layer. And now let me just pull this in, press Ctrl T. And I'm going to hold Ctrl Shift, Ctrl and, sorry, Shift and Alt to uh, resize it. And uh, I'm just going to place it over here. And I'm going to press Ctrl T. I'm going to give it some rotation. And click, I'm going to click OK. And then I'm going to press Ctrl J and I'm going to bring this down somewhere over here. I'm going to press Ctrl J again and I'm going to bring this down. And I'm going to press Ctrl T and uh, I'm just going to zoom in here and I'm going to shrink this thing down. So, like that. And then I'm just going to move it to the side and press Ctrl T and move this whole sh shift and alt and uh, just want to move it like that and we can just move this a little bit up so basically I'm making this thing touch over here and this thing touch over here take this and bring this down a little bit more if you want uh, we can press ctrl T and we can give this a little bit more rotation if it looks pretty off I think that looks good okay so now what we want to do is we want to give this an uh, uh, feel that these flares are taking a turn and so whatever is on the back that is this part is not visible so we need to remove all that so what we can do is we can click on the ellipse tool and we can click on this uh, box to add a layer mask 
and we can do the same for all of them we can add a layer mask and then add a layer mask and then what we're going to do is we're going to press B on the keyboard we're going to make sure that our foreground is back is black in color and we're going to click on this layer mask uh, area and then you want to go to this cup we're going to press ctrl and click it so it makes a selection, a selection of the whole cup and what it does it allows us to edit everything which is inside the cup now in the layer mask I'm just gonna click and I'm just gonna go and click that over there so you see that whatever was inside the cup it went it disappeared and it, how much ever I kind of rub it out back side it does not allow me to because it allows me to use only the selection that is inside so let me click on this ellipse and uh, do the same thing and we're gonna click on this ellipse and we're gonna do the same thing okay that looks extravagant Control d to deselect and now we're gonna go and we're gonna add some effects so I'm gonna go to the ellipse tool over here uh, the ellipse I'm gonna double click to get the blending the layer styles and then I'm gonna go to outer glow and I'm gonna set this opacity to a hundred I'm gonna go and set this to a white color and I'm gonna set the size of the size of this to 30 so now we can see we have this crazy awesome looking glow now we want to apply the same layer style to the other two so instead of going in double clicking and doing it we can have a shortcut so we're going to go right click over here we have this option called copy layer style and then i'm going to control click these both to select the both i'm going to go right click and then i'm going to choose paste their style so now it automatically applies it to these as well and i'm just going to click on this to follow them okay so the next thing that I want to do is I want to go and select all these. I'm going to press Ctrl G to group them and I'm just going to call them flares and I'm going to press Ctrl J to duplicate them and I'm just going to hide one of the flares. Now I'm going to open this up. I'm going to go select all these. I'm going to go choose right click and I'm going to rasterize them. I'm going to go delete this. Take all these and I'm going to move them out. I'm going to delete this flares copy folder and then I'm going to go and I'm going to press Control J to duplicate them again and then I'm gonna to go to filter oh, no, so let me just choose one and I'm gonna to go to filter we're gonna to go to distort and then we want to choose wave and then I think these settings are perfect so I'm just gonna click OK so now we see this crazy wave of wave over here so uh, we're gonna select this one helps again see uh, it's this one and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to press Control F, which will re just which will redo the filter that we done previously. So if you go to filter and choose uh, Control F over here, it's wave. And then I'm going to click on this and press Control F and wave. Now we want to add some color. So instead of manually adding the color, I'm going to select all these. I'm going to go and choose overlay. So now we have this red color thing. And now we can select these three, and we can just reduce the opacity of this to say something like 80 or let's actually keep it at a hundred that is completely okay okay so the next thing we want to do is we want to make sure that this edges are not really sharp so what we can do is we can go and press e and get our eraser tool we can go and set the hardness to zero we can press our square bracket to increase it and we can just go and just click on this edge over here and we can just go into everything and just just slightly manually just click it over there I'm gonna reduce it and uh, let's go here and do it on this side as well do it on this side as well and uh, do it on this side as well and click once again and I'm gonna go here I'm gonna do the same for this wave thingy click fade them away click and fade them away now press ctrl O and this is what we have it looks completely good great and you guys can reduce the size of the stroke so uh, when we go into our pen tool over here uh, let's make a selection and uh, you guys can actually change the stroke one I think seven was too much so you guys can probably go for three or four anyways uh, that looks pretty great now okay next we're gonna go and create some glows so I'm gonna go and create a new layer by pressing this button and uh, I'm just gonna zoom in over here to this middle point and then I'm gonna go and uh, choose this circle option circle 2 
and then we're going to hold click here i'm going to press ctrl alt and ctrl sorry shift and alt my bad shift and alt and then we just want to go and create something like that and then here we want to go into the fill we want to choose the gradient and uh, we want to go set it to radial and we just want to invert these colors and then here this the top the down the down uh, what marks over here show the color and the top one over here show the opacity so on the first uh, mark or whatever it's called I'm just going to reduce the opacity to zero so now you see that it fades away as it happens so you know you can see this fade okay and oops I think we didn't do it properly oh and we're going to go and take check, take this color and then we want to set it to a no uh, white Yes, we want to set this to a white, a completely white color. And I think the opacity, yes, the opacity was still 14. So we want to set, reduce that to completely zero. And then we want to go right click, rasterize. And then we want to just go and change the blending mode of this to, let's see, color dodge. No? Okay, so uh, what we want to do is we want to go take this hue and saturation. Wait, hold on. Let me see. Okay. So what we want to do is we want to go and uh, grab all these ellipse stuff and then we want to go come down and uh, let's drag it right above the cup and uh, we can uh, delete this shell thing if you want. And uh, what is this layer? Okay. That is the seashell layer. And then we want to click this and we want to select all this and we want to press Control G to group them. Oops. Uh, we don't want these two, so let's remove them out. I think we drop it inside the flare. So let me Control Z that. Okay, so under the flares, we have this. Okay, so, okay, so I think I'm going to delete these flares because we don't need it. And then I'm going to select these and all the, these four layers. I'm going to press Ctrl G. And then I'm going to take this brightness and contrast, move it out. Brightness, hue and saturation, move it out. And then I'm going to fold this group up. And then we're going to create a clipping mask over. Oops. And then create a clipping mask over here. Okay. Okay. So now after doing all the grouping, uh, this ellipse layer, let's just delete that and let's create a new layer from scratch. So we create a new layer. And then we take this uh, tool, the shape tool, and then we hold and uh, we just click and drag to create a kind of a good circle. And then uh, we want to go to fill, we want to choose the gradient, we want to use a radial, we want to reverse this, and we want to set this down color stop to white. And here we want to reduce this opacity to a 100 to 0. And then let's go and let's set this to color dodge. Okay, so now you can see the color. Cool, crazy, isn't it? So let me just go and choose rasterize there. Oh, that seems to be the problem. So when you rasterize this, that's what we get. Okay. So let's just press Ctrl T and we can scale this apart. So what what, you, what actually happening here is when I go and rasterize it, it kind of loses its properties. I have no clue why it's doing that. So what we want to do is we this is the final correct thing that we want to do. We want to delete this. We, want, we don't want to create a new layer, but we just want to go select the tool. Then we're going to hold Shift and Alt, and then we want to drag it out. And then you want to go doing the same things as in add in a gradient, reverse the colors. Add to radial, set the color to white. The top one will be transparency with an opacity of zero. I'm going to rotate this. Yeah, like that. Cancel. And then now we let's put it to color dodge. And then let's see if we can rasterize it. Okay, that seems to be the problem again. So, anyways, let's just keep it like that. We can control T it. We can increase the size of that. Okay great so let's make a copy of that by pressing ctrl j and uh, we can put one over here and uh, 
we can press Ctrl J again and we can take that one and we can put it over here and uh, let's just click away sorry if that keep thing keeps popping up okay so that looks pretty cool so once that is done we're going to be starting to add the clouds now so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go and uh, select all of this I'm going to press Control G again to group them and I'm going to press Control T and I'm just going to drag these guys down hit enter and then I'm going to go here and press Control A and I'm just going to center it and press Control D to deselect and I just want to move this pretty much down like that okay so now we're going to go to file and place and uh, we have these two clouds so I'm just going to select this cloud one and then I'm going to zoom in and I'm going to select a set of clouds so I'm going to be using this lasso tool and what this lasso tool does is just allows us to draw and uh, make our own selection so we go in like that we just draw that and go and then you press con and then we want to do Control C and we want to do Control V to paste it. And we want to go and delete this clouds. And now let's add the other one. So file place. We want to add uh, clouds two. And hit enter. And uh, we just want to choose this part of the cloud. Okay. Control C, Control V, and we can take this and delete it. So now what we want to do is with this layer selected, I'm going to go to image, I'm going to adjustments, and then I'm going to choose the replace color. So now what we can do here, make sure that the fuzziness is 40. So now what we can do here is we can choose colors and we can ask it to replace only that color. So I'm just going to click here. So it makes a selection of all the blue colors. And then I'm going to click on this to start adding the uh, shades of blue that are there over there. Okay, and then I'm going to go to the lightness here, which is the replacement, which where, where it will replace that color we just selected. And uh, we're going to bring that down to say like minus uh, 80, 85. Okay, and then we're going to click. Okay, now we're going to go to the top layer and we're going to do the same process. We go to image, adjustments, replace color, start selecting all these colors. Okay, set the lightness to minus 85 and click OK. <clears throat> and then what we want to do is we want to go and uh, choose the magic wand tool and let's see if it does copy. Um, let's, let's see. Okay, so we want to choose this tool called as a magic wand tool. And what it basically does is when you click on a spot, it just selects everything that is of that color. And then we're going to hit delete and we're going to select this layer and then we're going to go click here and then we're going to hit delete and then we're going to press ctrl d to deselect ctrl d to deselect looks like uh, we need to do it over here as well and hit delete and press ctrl d to deselect and boom there we go perfect now let's uh, go up and then we're going to go and start placing these clouds so I'm going to take this cloud and uh, move it up. I'm going to press Ctrl T and I'm going to hit Shift and Alt to scale it uniformly. And just move it up like that. I'm going to take this one and uh, just going to press Ctrl T to rotate it like that. And then I'm just going to place it like that. Okay. And now we want to add some birds. So let's go and uh, go to file we want to place and then we want to go and choose this birds picture now it's very, very difficult to uh, extract uh, the birds because even if i choose the magic control it doesn't get an ex appropriate exact accurate selection so what we want to do is we're going to go to image and then we want to go to adjustments okay let's actually go and rasterize this first rasterize layer and then we'll go to image uh, adjustments and then we want to choose um let's say desaturate and then we want to go and go to image adjustments 
and then uh, we want to choose invert okay, let's not do invert let's keep it like that and then we want to go and choose the magic wand tool with a tolerance of 20 and we want to click and then what we want to do is we want to go and press Control shift i to invert and we want to hit delete oops sorry uh you want to hit delete exactly right over there okay press Control d to deselect and then i'm going to be using my eraser tool and then I'm just going to rub off all this unnecessary thing that we don't need. Okay, and uh, some stuff over here. Okay, that looks good. And then I'm going to press Ctrl T and I'm going to uh, scale them down by holding Shift and Alt. And then just, I'm going to rotate it also. I'll press Ctrl T again. And then I'm just going to scale these things down pretty much. Let's scale them pretty low again. And we just want to keep them here some, somewhere like that. Okay. And then we're going to press Ctrl O. And there we go. We have these birds and crazy clouds looking awesome. Okay. So we're almost done now. So let me just grab all these and. Uh, I'm going to just move them down uh, and if you are not able to move them down then you need to make sure that you are in the move tool and then you want to move them down so uh, let's go and uh, create our cup or text sorry so let's go and just gonna type in uh, stormy cup and then we want to go and uh, change make this to a not completely white just a little bit of gray tint over there and uh, I selected this underline to underline the text and I'm going to Select the text, I'm going to press Ctrl A, and here I'm going to move it in the middle by pressing this button, and then I'm just going to bring it down like that. Okay, uh, I think these birds are a little not visible, so let me just select the birds and I'm going to press Ctrl Shift I to invert it. Uh, does it invert? Does it not invert? So let's zoom in here, and we go to image, image adjustments, and Invert. Oh, Control I. Control I is to invert, and now it looks more visible. Okay. Now we actually want to take the text and we want to drop it inside this group uh, because we want it to be affected by the colors. So we just drop it inside the group, and uh, let's see. Let's put it right on top of everything. Okay. So now we can see that it has been affected by the color. And I'm just going to go and uh, I'm going to go make this complete white because anyway it's going to be affected. Okay, see, it looks brilliant now. Okay, uh, the next thing I want to do is we want to go and create the back background which has some fractal. So let's go and create a new layer under group one, and then we want to go to select, we want to go to filter. Uh, render and we want to choose clouds and now we have this crazy thing but we want to go to the blending mode over here and then we want to choose it to soft light ah now you see it looks cool and then what we want to do is we just want to start uh, oops, taking a layer mask and then we want to take our brush tool make sure that black is on the foreground we're going to increase and I just want to start rubbing on the parts where we do not want the fractal to be there. Make sure that the uh, hardness is zero. So let me just control Z that. So we first of all, we don't want it on the cup. So let's just do that. Let me reduce the size. And then we don't want it on the text as well. Then we just want, don't want it on the edges right there. So let's go and... Uh, Remove these. Uh, before we do that, we just want to go and change the opacity to 50 so we get a clear picture and then we can start rubbing off everything. Just make it kind of random and not too uniform. Just start rubbing off all these edges. Okay, something like that. I think that looks pretty nice. 
Uh, and uh, one other thing we can actually do is uh, we can press E. Sorry, you can press X to reverse the colors. And then we just want to actually draw it on all this. Okay. And then I'm going to go to my cup. And then I'm going to press Control and click on the thumbnail. And then I'm going to press X again to make black my foreground color. And then I just want to rub it off just to make sure. And deselect so that uh, we have the fractal that falls right uh, there and does not go beyond the cup. And we can actually do that. We can select all the ellipse. We can uh, hold down. Uh, okay. So for the ellipse, it's going to be pretty difficult. So the only thing I could do is I can reduce down the brush size like really low and then just go there and uh, give it a, this slight uh, manual touch. So let's go here and just rub it off. Make sure that your hardness is set to zero because it will look really ugly. Okay, I think that is pretty cool. It looks crazily awesome. Okay, so the last thing we want to do before finishing off this thing is add a shadow. So to add a shadow, uh, we're going to go here on top of the layer, base of the background, and then you just want to add a new layer. And uh, we want to go choose this black, change the color to black. We want to press B, and uh, we just want to increase it pretty much, and then we just want to just draw it like that. Let's see if, what happens if we put it inside. No difference. Let's put it inside. And uh, we have this black color thing. Uh, now, you guys can't actually see anything because we have the fractal over here overlaid. So let's go to the fractal layer and then let's click to remove the fractal from there. And let's just zoom out a little back. Now, this looks completely ugly. So we want to go and uh, just move it off to the side over here. And uh, we can actually go to filter, blur, and choose Gaussian blur. And uh, we can feather it to say around 200 pixels. And we can reduce the opacity of it to 60. And we can press E on the keyboard and we can erase off the unnecessary ones over here. Oops. Let's set the opacity to say 70, not 50. And we just want to rub it off. Okay, let's go. And that looks like a great shadow. And just move it up to this side. Okay, so this is the tutorial on how to create the Stormy Cup in uh, Photoshop. And I hope you guys really learned something. And um, Thank you so much for watching this tutorial. Please comment below if, if there are any tutorials that you want me to watch. Sorry, you want me to make. And um, really appreciate. Please like, share, and subscribe. And I hope to see you in other future tutorials. So, goodbye.